Let's look at Psalm 3110. Verse 9, have mercy upon me, O Lord. I'm in trouble. My eyes consumed with grief. Yea, my soul and my belly, for my life is spent with grief and my years in, with sighing. My strength fails me because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. First Thessalonians chapter four. Verse nine, as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are, which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more in love and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, work with your own hands as we commend you that you walk honestly toward them that are without and, th and that you may have lack of nothing. But I would that you have, uh, that I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Now, that sorrow not, the Greek word is lapeo. Grieve not. We're not a people that have no hope. Don't get into grief. Amen. Amen. Grief is death's companion. I learned that ministering to people. I saw it over and over and over again. He said, sorrow not. And I went to a home going ceremony, a funeral. I don't like that word. Anyway, and the, the, the word of the Lord came to me. Well, I might as well tell you the rest of the story. Well, this woman, I, 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 I was ministering to her and I, I told her she had a covenant of healing. She had cancer. And she'd just get so excited and she just, oh, she just, oh, I'm a covenant woman and I'm healed. I'd come back to town and, oh, Brother Kobe, you come break me. Okay, okay. Well, and it just went on and on and on. I found out later that she had some friends coming over there and talked her out of everything that I told her from the Word. Now you don't need to be listening to him. He'll get your hopes up high and just crash her. Well, finally she did crash. And I was out of town. I came. Well, I went. <laughs> her husband, his name was Bill, was a sweet and lovely man. But I mean, this, this is his wife of many years. And he came over there to me and he said, now Brother Copeland, She's already been embalmed now. <laughs> Don't be messing raising her from the dead. <laughs> I said, okay, Bill. I don't. But the Lord had me said, watch this. And then people started coming to him saying, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. Oh, we're so sorry you lost you. Well, then I, I began to watch for it. And I went into, to, saw places where I was ministering and people would come up and say, oh, I'm so sorry. People came up to me when my mother went to heaven. We're so sorry you lost your mother. I said, well, don't pass that sorry on me. <laughs> She's not lost and neither am I. Amen. I know exactly where she is and she knows exactly where I am. All she did was leave town. And besides that, she wanted to go. <laughs> don't, and the Lord said, don't pass the sorrow around. 
And he said, I don't want you using that word to express yourself anymore. If you're going to apologize to somebody, say, I apologize. Don't tell them I'm sorry. He said, are you sorry? Is there something wrong with you? <laughs> Just a sorry man? I said, well, no. He said, well, quit saying you are. Okay, I got it. I apologize. Well, that says it. But I had to break the habit. I'm so sorry. Well, uh, oh, oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. He bore my grace and carried my sorrows, but I'm sorry. <laughs> this is important. Yes, sir. Words count. Yes, sir. Well, anyway, and I'll, I'll get now right on into this. He said, don't do it. So grief, I've noticed this then and I watched it over the years and go home going services where people begin to grieve and they openly show the grief, openly show that grief. And so I had the Lord just, just watch it. Just, just watch it. And he pointed out this particular woman. He said, now what's going to happen to her? Well, I'd already seen it before. He said, people are going to gather around in the house. They're going to bring all the food right after that service is over. They're going to bring all the food in there and everybody's going to try to find something to say to her. And all they know how to do is say, we're so sorry. And the, you know, you see people that say, we're sorry for your loss. Well, they're doing the best they can. But he said, now what's going to happen to her when, when all the potato salad's gone? Nancy, you tell me. All the potato salad and, 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 and Ed's home gone was sudden, unexpected. Now she's left by herself. The potato salad's gone. They're all gone home. They cleaned up the kitchen, yeah. But now she's cried herself out and there's nowhere else to go. And people will tell her, oh, sweetheart, the time will take care of it. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Now, somebody like Nancy, she knew what to do. Come on. She's trained. Yeah. But people are not. What happens? Grief doesn't go away. This is the reason God said, don't be doing that. It just stays there. Yeah. And you get over it. Then there's the picture. Oh, no, I got to hide the picture. Why? It's still in there. And the Lord said to me, he said, I have whole churches full of it because the pastor doesn't do anything about it. They re weep and wail. One pastor, one of my heroes, He's the man that said, if that doesn't set you on fire, your wood's wet. And, there's, and, and, and he's a black man. And, and the majority of his congregation was black. And they had a funeral in there in the congregation and, and began to weep and moan and cry and try to fall over that, that, that coffin. And he just shut it down. He said, you stop that. We don't do that in this church. Now get up from there and go sit down in your seat till I get through preaching to you. Come on. Okay. <laughs> he would not let that grief get in his church. Amen. Amen. It couldn't hang around. And if you're dealing with that this morning, there's joy on the other side of it. Amen. Now, Shirley Boone's dad was Red Foley. I mean, this is a hero country guy in Nashville, Tennessee. And that's her dad. And they used to sing with their dad. And she called me. She said, 
what you, what? And he, she said, Kenna, what do you think I ought to do? And so I shared some scripture with her. I said, now, Shirley, let me tell you what you do now. You know, the word of God said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. So I said, get a smile on your face. Go, go get in front of the mirror and practice it. Yes. <laughs> and I said, when you get the Greek, she says, no, 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So she told her sister about it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And they practiced smiling. So they went downtown. The streets were full of people. And she said, <laughs> I, I, that, our faces were frozen in a smile. And people thought, I said, they thought there was something wrong with them. <laughs> because they didn't grieve when their dad went home to be with the Lord. Well, Brother Copeland, I don't know whether he is saved or not. Well, that's just it. You don't know. And besides that, he's already gone and not anything you can do about it. But you can trust God. God is a faithful God. And there are evidences where it has happened that once somebody just stepped over on the other side and Jesus appeared to them and said, you don't want to do this right now. You need to accept me as your savior. And this one situation was on a 700 club. The man had a bad heart. His wife kept praying for him and he wouldn't pay any attention to her. Now he just laughed her off, claimed to be an atheist. Well, he wasn't. And he was in his pickup and had a terrible heart attack and dropped his head down on the steering wheel. And when he hit that steering wheel with his head, suddenly he was in the spirit. And when he got in the spirit, there was Jesus and there was heaven and there was hell. And the Lord said, take your pick. No, no, he said, I want you. <laughs> well, he woke up healed. If you have any grief in, your, in, in, in you at all right now, you just say, no, no, no. That doesn't belong to me. Amen. He bore mine. Amen. So let's go to the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. In the King James. Oh, the book of Isaiah. Did you know the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible? There's 66 chapters. There's 66 books in the Bible. So Isaiah 53, but you start in the 52nd, 13th verse. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage or his form was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. He's talking about Jesus here. Marred until he no longer looked like a man. Now Jesus was, was so slapped and so beat, his face was so swollen that he no longer looked human. And by the time he hung on that cross, he was so disfigured. Well, then you move on, a, on from that. And but chapter 53, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Now, he's a good looking man. Well, it'd we have to be, <laughs> he's a perfect specimen of a man. But if you met him in the street, he, he's just a good looking Jewish man. And meet him in the street and talk to him. Very kind very loving, did no miracles, none until he was 30. Well, 
He's of the tribe of Judah, not Levi. And that was on the blessing mountain. (laughs) So we're of the tribe of Judah. We're joint heirs with him. Now I want you to look at, watch this now carefully. Surely, oh, despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I mean, he was, he was broken. Not a bone in his body was broken. But his heart was broken. And then pierced with a spear. And we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned on one to his own way and the Lord hath hid, laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Now, look at the ninth verse. And he made his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death. My King James cross reference has a number one by death. Does yours? Deaths, plural. Well, what does that mean? He was separated from God. So he not only died physically, but he had to die spiritually in order to give our spirit life. And when I started preaching that, you you can't imagine how much flack I got for that. Just gave me all kinds of grief for it. But there it is. And besides that, he was manifested in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Well, he was manifested as the son of God in the flesh. He's born of Mary and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But then when was he manifested in the spirit? In hell. Read the 22nd Psalm. Read the book of Acts. You'll not suffer my soul to stay in hell, neither will you let my body see corruption. And when he came out of that tomb, he had borne every sickness, every disease, every, everything, all of it. He bore it. He bore it. God laid it on him. He bore it. He was made a curse for us. 61st verse of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And every sickness and every disease not written in this law is under this curse. So I don't care what it is. (laughs) COVID. Well, yeah. But when the, uh, the flu started and John Kelly was small, so I uh, told Gloria what we were going to do. And, and so I came home and, and she got the children who had this, we had this large uh, ottoman, big green ottoman. So we got it out in the living room floor. I said, all right, kids, going to take our flu shots. John's eyes got big and looked over there at me. So I took the 61st chapter 61st verse, 28th chapter of Deuteronomy and Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, let me show you because we're going to do this. Turn back over there. Look. But it will come to pass if you'll not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. So it's not a matter of just God cursing you. No, he's not cursing anybody. It's the devil that's doing the problem. But they did, they had to learn their covenant. They'd just come out of Egypt. 
Curse shall be his head in the basket. Curse shall you be the fruit of your body in the land of curse. Now, look at this one. The Lord will make the pestilence cleave unto thee until you've been consumed. 22nd verse. You'll be smitten with a consumption. What is that? Tuberculosis. With a fever, with an inflammation, with extreme burning, with the sword, with the blasting and mildew and pursue you until you perish. So we just sat down there and I, I read, you'll have fever, bad fever. I said, that's the flu, isn't it? Uh-huh. So I just had it like that and, and flipped it over there to the book of Galatians. Christ has redeemed us from the flu. He's redeemed us from it. So we're not going to have it. So I just kept going back and forth like that. And they let them read it. Well, John wasn't, wasn't big enough to read, but Kelly could. And so we just read it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They never did have the flu. Kelly came in from school one day with it. And uh, she was in high school. She came home. She said, Daddy, I've had flu symptoms on me all day long. And she said, I, I just, I, I, I really feel sick right now. And the Spirit of God just came up out of my mouth. I said, Kelly, we are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed and the devil's trying to take your health away from you. I said, he's trying to give you the flu. She said, well, I won't take it. She said, I'll be back. Walked into her bedroom and closed the door. And she stayed in there for a while and, and came out for supper. No symptoms, no fever. She attacked it. They never did have it. And then they got out and Kelly started having children. Gloria said, now you're going to have to teach these children. And they know the same thing. Amen. See, that's the way this works. Amen. You don't, what do we resist? We resist everything that Jesus bore for us on the cross. That's our identification. Amen. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Well, we, we resist sin and we resist sickness. We resist disease. My situation started at the end of March. March 29th, I went to go see my doctor for a left quadrant, lower quadrant pain that had been, I had been dealing with for about a month and it never went away. So I went to the doctor. Um, she checked some things and sent, you know, I went home. And then maybe about a week later, I started having pain. I woke up, it seemed like I woke up one morning with pain just everywhere literally everywhere from head to toe. And so I just thought maybe it was just vitamin D because I deal with low vitamin D. So I called my doctor and I, you know, I told her, I think my vitamin D is low. I went back in, she tested it. It was a little low. She put me on a prescription. Usually after I finish a prescription, the pain goes away. My right arm have been lingering. I would wake up still with pain in my right arm. And today I came and Pastor Copeland prayed and I just, I don't have the pain in my arm. And today you prayed and I just lifted that arm up and praise God, I have no pain. Praise God, let me, let, let me see what you can do. <laughs> I know that in my faith and the way I'm feeling now that I'm healed of whatever it was. It's power in, it's, it's power in prayer and I know God is a healer and he's my healer. God has given us victory in the area of health and healing. He'll keep you safe from virus, infection, discomfort, and disease when you follow the instructions laid out in the Bible on how to get healed and stay that way. For over 50 years, Gloria Copeland has been passionately teaching people how to apply the principles of faith found in God's Word to take their healing. Get on the road to divine health with your healing prescription package. Listen and participate in Healing School with Gloria's six-message audio series. 
Use the scriptures as your prescription medicine to stay healed with the RX Healing Brochure and discover the keys to living well and having a full, healthy life with Gloria's mini book, Three Steps to the Good Life. There is sickness in the world, but as believers, we know that our weapon is not against flesh and blood and faith for healing will come as you keep filling your heart with the Word of God. Live symptom and fear free, confident in God's power to get healed and stay healed for a long, strong life. Request your healing prescription package free from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. Take God's healing prescription. Let the Word of God in these teaching resources help you receive your healing and stay well. See yourself living healthy and whole. Offer good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Dwayne Munoz, Associate Dean at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. When you choose to be the caretaker of your own life, you're dependent only on what you can do, and all the trust is in yourself. God never intended for you to live under that pressure. He made a way through Jesus for you to live free, free from fear, stress, sickness and disease, lack and all the cares of the world. There is a way to transfer your trust to God who loves you, and that is giving your life to Jesus by asking Him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. That important decision changes everything. God places His faith in you, and that faith contains the power to bring the blessings He's promised into your life. There is no limit to His goodness. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank You that You love me so much, that You gave Your only Son to take my place and to take the punishment that was mine. And in return, I receive Your life in my heart, you are now my Lord and my Savior. And I pray, fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I may be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. Your right standing with God has given you rights and privileges in the kingdom of God, and that includes health, wholeness, protection, peace, and freedom. You can trust God for His good plan to give you a future and a hope. To learn more, KCM has put together some free resources to send you, and it's called The Salvation Package. It includes a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and two brochures to guide you in reading your Bible. Keep growing and building your faith in God's Word. To request your free Salvation Package today, go to kcm.org. Thank you for joining us today. Tomorrow, Brother Copeland takes us through a powerful confession of faith to receive your healing in Jesus' name. This is Dwayne Munoz reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Learn more about who you are in Jesus and who He is in you. Request the Salvation Package free on kcm.org salvation.